Hello, good afternoon. This is the Alt 24 Breaking News. And coming up next. People in Morocco continue to organize demonstrations in cities across the country to voice protests at Rubat's move to normalize ties with the Zionist occupation. South Africa's president has condemned travel bans enacted against his country and its neighbors over the new coronavirus variant on Macron. The World Health Assembly is gathering for a special conference starting from today until the 1st of December. First in our top stories, people in Morocco plan to organize more demonstrations in cities across the country to voice protests at Rabat's move to normalize ties with the Zionist entity. The non-governmental group Front of Support of Palestinian has invited all Moroccans to attend the rallies. At least 27, 27 cities are expected to host protests, including Rabat, Casablanca, Al Jadida, Tituan, and Burkan. Earlier, demonstrators took the streets chanting against the normalization of relations with the Zionist entity and the visit of its defense minister. They called for elimination of all agreements between their country and the said entity. <clears throat> To a different story now, as cases the new and macro variants emerge around the world, many countries are imposing travel bans of increasing quarantine requirements. Zara Fergeni, in this report. Japan will close to all foreign travelers from Tuesday in a bid to slow the spread of the new Omicron variant of COVID-19. The country will restore border controls it had only eased earlier this month for short-term business visitors, foreign students and workers. Authorities in Australia said two travellers who arrived to Sydney from Africa became the first in the country to test positive for the new variant. Travellers from nine African countries are now required to quarantine in a hotel upon arrival. Still, the nation plans to reopen borders to skilled migrants and students starting from December 1st. Tighter restrictions have come into force in the Netherlands amid record COVID cases and concerns over the new Omicron variant. For at least the next three weeks, hospitality and cultural venues such as cafes, museums and cinemas must close by five. The UK tightened rules on mask wearing and on testing of international arrivals after finding two Omicron cases, but British Health Secretary said the government was nowhere reinstituting work from home or more severe social distancing measures. From next month, Spain will allow tourists to enter its territory if they can show proof of a COVID-19 vaccination. Until now, unvaccinated travelers were allowed into the country if they could present a negative PCR test that was taken 72 hours before their arrival. France's health ministry said on Sunday that it had detected eight possible cases of the new Omicron variant, with the government saying it would tighten restrictions to contain its spread. No cases linked to Omicron have been detected in the U.S. so far, yet the country is going to restrict travel from South Africa and seven other countries in the region starting Monday. American citizens and permanent U.S. residents, along with spouses and close friends, will be exempt from the travel ban. Canada has detected two cases of the Omicron variant in Ontario. Health officials said in a statement that the cases were found in two people who had recently been in Nigeria. Ontario has focused rapid COVID-19 testing on travelers who have been to the infected countries. In the same line of thought, South African President Cyril Ramaphosa has called for lifting Omicron travel bans. Ramaphosa expressed his dissatisfaction on decision calling it scientifically unjustified as more countries report cases of a new highly mutated variant. More about this variant with our friend Nabil. 
South Africa's president, Cyril Ramaphosa, has condemned travel bans enacted against his country and its neighbors over the new corona variant Omicron. Cyril Ramaphosa said he was deeply disappointed by the action, which he described as unjustified and called for the bans to be urgently lifted. These restrictions are completely unjustified and unfairly discriminate against our country and our Southern African sister countries. Australia, Japan, Canada and the US are among many other countries which announced travel restrictions from South Africa. Scientists say they are worried Omicron may be more infectious and that the new variant is more resistible to existing vaccines. It looks potentially quite a lot scarier even than Delta. And don't forget, we thought of Delta, I certainly thought of Delta, as, as peak variant and probably it couldn't get much worse than that. This looks potentially worse. Um, on the other hand, there's no reporting from South Africa yet that cases are more severe. And it looks like vaccines may still be doing something because we heard from there yesterday that the people in hospital tended to be the unvaccinated people rather than the vaccinated. Travel bans have been imposed on travelers coming from South African countries, including South Africa, Botswana and Zimbabwe, days after the new coronavirus variant was discovered. Our flight's booked for a week's time, <coughs> but we got the news from our daughter in the UK about 12.30, 1 o'clock last night, saying that the UK were going to <coughs> introduce a red list. The World Health Organization has called a meeting of experts in Geneva to assess the threat amid new cases have been identified in the Netherlands, Denmark, Australia and the United Kingdom. The World Health Organization called on the international community to avoid imposing travel restrictions on southern African countries in response to the new variant of the COVID-19 virus Omicron. The WHO recommends that all countries take scientific and risk-based approach and put in place measures that can limit its possible spread. Countries such as Australia, Japan, United States and Canada have blacklisted travelers from South African countries to enter their territories in growing series of travel restrictions imposed as countries were struggling to slow the spread of this variant. In the same line of thought, the World Health Organization named the newly and the potentially more trans transmissible coronavirus variants on my crown, describing it as variants of concern. They said that multiple studies are underway as advisors continue to monitor this latter. Zara Firjani on what follow. The health officials have stated that the new Omicron coronavirus variant has shown the pandemic is far from over. Despite only being tracked for the past five days, the virus has already been found to have 30 different mutations. The mutations contain features seen in all of the other variants, but also traits that have not been seen before. And the mutations um, show evidence of uh, increased transmissibility, uh, increased infectivity, and also evidence that it could evade the immune response and also the um, uh, treatment uh, with monoclonal antibodies such as Ronaprev. All those are very concerning. It is too early to say vaccines protect people against Omicron. Work is underway to see whether the new variant may be causing new infection in people who have already had coronavirus or whether waning immunity may be playing a role. It, it's the mutations that again tell us that it has differences that are there. However, the vaccine's not an all or nothing. And I think it's really important, even more important now that people come out and get their booster doses because having high levels of um, immune response from the booster dose is the one thing that will help overcome this sort of variation. The vaccine um, in, in, the introduces not only antibodies in our system, but also introduces T cell responses, which are very broad. And so while I think this may reduce the effectiveness of vaccine compared to other variants, I don't think it will mean the vaccine won't work completely. But what it does mean that, you know, boosters become even more important right now. So far, cases of the variant have appeared primarily in young people, leaving them exhausted and with body aches and soreness. Pfizer BioNTech, which has produced a vaccine against COVID-19, is already studying a new variant's ability to evade vaccines. In a related matter, World Health Assembly is organizing a conference 
which started today until the last three days. This World Organization normally meets each May, however, a special session has been organized in order for the representative of the WHO, 190 four members stated to discuss the new international rules for handling future outbreaks. It is worth mentioning that the special session was the second in the history of this organization. To a different matter now, the Philippines launched on Monday an ambitious drive to vaccinate 9 million people against COVID-19 in three days. Deploying security forces and thousands of volunteers in program made urgent by the threats of the Omicron variant. Though the earlier target of 15 million shots was scaled back, 9 million would still be significant number in archipelago nation where logistic and vaccine hesitancy are obstacles. China sent the biggest incursion of war plans toward Taiwan in more than seven weeks. Taiwan's air force scrambled again on Sunday to war away 27 Chinese aircraft that entered its air defense zone. Taiwan's defense ministry said the latest increase in tensions across Taiwan's Taipei and China president met his top generals. Taiwan said 27 Chinese aircraft, including 8G-60 fighter jets, entered its air defense buffer zone on Sunday, the latest in a long series of invasions as part of Beijing's pressure on the self-ruled island. The defense ministry said Taiwan scrambled combat aircraft to warn the Chinese planes to leave. It also deployed missile systems to monitor them. In a post on the ministry's Twitter account, Taiwanese Foreign Minister Joseph Wu wrote that the coercive action is obviously meant to bring Taiwan to its knees and keep us away from democratic partners. The Chinese aircraft flew into Taiwan's air defense identification zone near the southern part of the island and out into the Pacific Ocean before returning to China, according to a map by Taiwan authorities. China's Air Force mission toward Taiwan came as Chinese President Xi Jinping met with officers at a military conference where he called for military talent cultivation to support and strengthen the armed forces, according to state-owned news agency Xinhua. China claims democratically ruled Taiwan as its own territory to be brought under its control by force if necessary. It refuses to recognize the island's government and has increasingly sought to isolate the independence-leaning administration of President Tsai Ing-wen. Tens of thousands of Russian troops have reportedly assembled near the Ukrainian borders, rising fears that Russia is preparing to repeat its 2014 invasion and, uh, of the Ukrainian peninsula of Crimea, which sparked worldwide outrage and sanctions against Moscow. Moscow, Hussein Berkan in this uh, report. President Vladimir Putin is being watched closely by experts and officials who fear Russia might be planning a military escalation with its neighbor Ukraine. Tens of thousands of Russian troops have reportedly gathered at the border with Ukraine, and experts fear Russia could be about to stage a repeat of its 2014 invasion and annexation of the Ukrainian peninsula of Crimea, which prompted global outrage and sanctions on Moscow. In a press conference with the European Union Commission President Ursula von der Leyen and Lithuania's President Gitana Nusheda in Vilnius, NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg stressed that the alliance is concerned about the swarming of Russian forces near the borders with Ukraine, calling Russia to reduce tension. All allies have expressed solidarity with Lithuania and we have provided practical uh, help. NATO recently deployed a team of experts to Lithuania to share information, analysis and experience in countering hybrid threats. We are also in contact with partner countries that may be used for transit and I welcome their efforts. Kremlin spokesman Dmitry Peskov for his part stressed that Russia has no intention of attacking Ukraine or any other party, seeing that the hysteria fueled by the Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky is baseless. Russia has repeatedly stressed that it has never planned any military intervention in Ukraine territory, stressing its right to mobilize any military forces anywhere within its territory.
It is noteworthy that Russia's President Vladimir Putin announced his intention to strengthen Russia's armed forces to confront the growing activity of NATO in its borders against the backdrop of tension between Moscow and the West over Ukraine, and has repeatedly warned the West not to cross Moscow's red lines and to stay away from what the Kremlin consider its sphere of influence. Critical talks with Iran aim at reviving the Iran nuclear deal and preventing its collapse. The talks are to resume in Vienna after five months. Officials will discuss the possible return of the U.S. to the 2015 agreement, which limited Iran nuclear activities in return for the lifting of sanctions. Marwa Blewer on this paper will more clarify it. Tehran has announced it will resume talks with world powers later this month in Vienna to try to retrieve their 2015 nuclear deal after the agreement saw Iran agree to restrict its enrichment of uranium in exchange for the lifting of sanctions. In 2018, the United States, under the leadership of Donald Trump, pulled out the deal which had initially been agreed by Washington, the UK, France, Russia, Germany and China. Iran insists that its nuclear program is entirely peaceful. Yet, Western diplomats have warned that the time is running out to negotiate a solution because of the significant advances Iran has made in its uranium enrichment program, which is a possible pathway to a nuclear bomb. Iranian Deputy Foreign Minister Ali Baghri Kani, who serves as Tehran's chief negotiator, announced in a tweet that discussions would resume in Vienna on November 29th. The negotiations in Vienna come amid mounting pressure on Iran, with Western nations warning that the country's nuclear work is advancing to dangerous levels. The United States has previously pulled out the talks under Trump's administration, but his successor, President Joe Biden, took office hoping to return to the 2015 agreement. Soldiers and police from Australia and Papua New Guinea were assisting in restoring all the end Solomon Islands as cleanup operation began following several days of unrest that killed three people and resulted in thousands of arrests. Islam Sidon what follow? Shattered glass, burned out shops, rubble and mounds of rubbish from the streets. That's what's left after the anarchy. A reminder of looting and rioting that broke out following protests over poverty, hunger and Sugavari's policies. Honiaro residents started a cleanup campaign in the streets after the deadly riots, as soldiers and police from Australia and Papua New Guinea helped to restore calm and peace. Protesters attempted to storm the parliament of the Pacific Island nation, as many believe their government is corrupt and swayed by Beijing and other foreign powers. The prime minister on his behalf saw the unrest as a conspiracy that had taken on a political dimension, stating that people with evil motives were plotting to depose him. The economy was anticipated to lose at least $28 million with the bank's governor warning that the riots had undermined the country's accounts, which were already battling to recover from the COVID-19 pandemic. I've made that very clear. Our presence there does not indicate any position on the internal issues of the Solomon Islands. It is there in direct response to a request made by the Prime Minister so we can be present to assist the Royal Solomon Islands Police Force to be able to ensure that police uh, can provide stability and security so the normal constitutional processes can be undertaken. Meanwhile, Australian Prime Minister Scott Morrison announced that more Australian Federal Police will arrive in the Solomon Islands on Sunday and that Fiji will also send troops. He also stated that the Solomon Islands were responsible for resolving the conflict. As will and President Nicolas Maduro described on Sunday, European Union observers who came to his country to observe the recent local election as enemies and spies. Maduro denied the irregularities pointed out by the observers in the mission report. The U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken, for his part, said that this country considers the regional elections that were held in Venezuela unacceptable and that the country's authorities resorted the process in its favor. After a massive turnout in Honduras' election, the opposition has taken the lead. Examora Castro wins 
and he will hundreds and he will be Honduras first female leftist president since 2019 more to be clarified in this paper in Honduras, a strong turnout has raised expectations of change after a dozen of years of national party rule. According to officials, opposition candidate Xiomara Castro has a clear lead over ruling party candidate Nasri Asfura. The Electoral Council said more than 2.7 million people voted and Castro had over 53% support with votes from more than 16% of ballot boxes, while Asfura had 34%. Left-wing Castro has attempted to unite opposition to outgoing President Juan Orlando Hernández, who has denied accusations of ties to powerful gangs despite an ongoing investigations in the United States, linking him to alleged drug trafficking. Castro stated, We can't just stay at home. This is our chance. This is the time to overthrow the dictatorship, after voting in Castamacas. Salva el pueblo, salva el pueblo. Today, only the people save the people. There is no other opportunity. There will not be another time. Honduras can't endure four more years. We have to stop these caravans of Honduran men and women who are leaving our country in masses because of the insecurity, the lack of opportunity, the lack of work, the lack of health, the lack of education. If the opposition candidate wins, she will be Honduras' first female president, restoring the left to power for the first time since her husband, former President Manuel Zelaya, was forced out of office in a 2009 coup. An official said that France's Minister for Overseas Territories will hold crisis territories will hold crisis talks on Caribbean islands beginning Sunday as the government seeks to defuse tensions following more than a week and rest in the region as a result of its handling of the COVID-19 pandemic. In Guadeloupe, there is a long history of mistrust in the government's handling of the health crisis dating back to 1917, when many people were exposed to toxic pesticides using in banana plantation. Curfews have helped restore some calm in recent days following violence in which stores were looted and police were shot at the night. The World Health Organization and drama ending in all the European top leagues starting from Spain where Real Madrid take the lead and last minutes by Vinicius Junior who is performing tremendous season so far. More about yesterday's games in the sports in this report. El Merengue or Real Madrid came from behind to beat Sevilla at the Bernabeu, moving four points clear at the top of La Liga. Vinicius Jr. scored a spectacular late winner. Rafa Mir put the visitors ahead early, but Karim Benzema equalized with a tap-in. Real's comeback was completed when Vinicius cut inside and hit the top corner with a spectacular right-footed strike. Real are now four points clear of a rival Atletico Madrid who thumped Cadiz 4-1 earlier on Sunday. With Thomas Limar, Antoine Griezmann, Angel Correa and Matheus Kona on target for Diego Simeone's side and also Real Sociedad. United, who were playing under caretaker manager Michael Carrick until Rangig's appointment was announced, kept Cristiano Ronaldo on the bench and played mostly defensive game until Jadon Sancho broke the deadlock five minutes after halftime. Chelsea were forced into action and Jorginho made amends for his error in the 69th minute when he equalized from the penalty spot after Aaron Wombisaka fooled Thiago Silva. Sassolo came from behind to win at the San Siro, denying AC Milan the chance to take top of Serie A. Milan took the lead through captain Alessio Romagnoli in the 21st minute. But Sassolo scored three minutes later when Gianolka hammered in 25 yards via the crossbar. In the second half, Domenico Berardi added the visitors' third goal after Simon Cayer turned into his own net. To this end, ladies and gentlemen, that's all what we have. Let's have a reminder for our main stories. People in Morocco plan to organize demonstration cities across the country to voice protests at robots move to normalize ties with the Zionist occupation. South Africa's president has condemned travel bans enacted against his country and the 
neighbors over the new coronavirus variant Omicron. World Health Assembly will gather for special conference starting from today to the 1st of December. That's for now. See you at 6. Bye-bye.